For every new purchase we make for our closet, the intention is that it's going to be something that endures, that really lasts, and that we love and cherish for a long, long time. However, that's not always the case. And I thought today we could reflect on my best and worst purchases of 2022. Usually I do a style fave, so I thought we would approach it with a slightly different tack this time around. I'm gonna alternate between best and worst, and everything I share will be linked in the description box below. Also, a happy new year to you all. I hope you've been having such a brilliant start to 2023. Now, let's dive right in with my very first best purchase, which has to be the Cezanne Paxton tea. And apologies for the lighting, it's a little bit funny today. This to me is more than just a basic tee because it has this structured shoulder effect, which is all down to the way that the garment is sewn. There is not a single shoulder pad in sight, which I appreciate because I find a little bit too much padding at the shoulders can feel overwhelming on my frame. It's also made from organic cotton, has a bit of a boxy fit, washes really well, and it's quite a thick, weighty cotton as well, but it feels really nice and soft. I wear mine in a size small, and I'd say it fits true to size love and it does come in other colors too okay one of my worst purchases was something i actually added to my closet during my low buy for the first half of 2022 and it's this beautiful little set from steel so bust year and then it also had a matching midi skirt in this beautiful meadow floral and i think that is actually the key to why I haven't really worn this. I've worn it maybe twice or three times, but I never really feel quite like myself when I put it on. The quality is really, really nice. Uh, I actually have never bought anything from Steel before. This was my first purchase, and from that perspective, I was really pleased. Uh, I did size down on the skirt to an extra small, but I have the bustier in a size small. I feel really good in this, but it's more that I just feel like I'm dressing for my fantasy self. And that's definitely something that I've tried to make sure I'm not doing. I had thought the print might be a great one because it is a micro floral and I find that those are something I generally tend to like but I'd say it's all down to the color story. There's yellow, the uh, deep purple and then the turquoise teal hue. I just think that they're not quite right for my closet. I didn't really take that into consideration so I'm probably going to try and give this another go but otherwise I think it's probably one to pass on. If I had it in a neutral color or even more of a neutral floral, maybe something that was a bit more chocolate based, I think that this might have gotten a lot more wear. The next best purchase is one I want to talk about because for me this was a pragmatic purchase. It was one that was bought out of necessity because it was raining so much here in Sydney. A girlfriend of mine who used to work in retail, she has a jacket from Rains and she could not rave about it enough which was a great testimonial and was really what pushed me to purchase one from Rains. Uh, I will link some alternatives down below. Uh, I do wish I had gotten it in a medium. I have the small and I do find that it's a little bit narrow underneath the arms but this has been great in the downpours that we've had here in Sydney over the past year and something I know I'm going to have in my closet for years, sort of one of those purchases that you make once. I will say I've received a number of questions to style a rain jacket. I don't do that. I throw this on over my outfit regardless of whether it goes or not because for me it is all about practice as opposed to how it looks for appearances sake and that's sometimes the way that you wear your closet but yeah that was a great addition to my wardrobe this past year next item on my worst purchases list has to be the leche belt from Isabel Morant which might come as a bit of a surprise one I don't think I've ever talked about it on my channel though I've maybe featured it in some styling components both on my Instagram and here but also because so many people seem to love this belt the quality is there. It is beautiful. I do have the Zap Belt from Isabel Morant, which I bought, I want to say six years ago, and it is exceptional quality. This is in the same realm. For me, it is more about the style and the way that it looks on me. I think what it comes down to is that I really like the combination of the metal buckle paired with the leather, and this obviously is just leather. It does also create a little bit of bulk at the waist, which I don't love, and I know if you are just knotting your belt, you are going to get that effect, but I feel like this is especially bulky. So yeah, I'm at 50-50 on this. I'm going to really try the most to wear it in 2023 because, uh, you know, I really don't like my purchases to go to waste. 
Okay, next best purchase that I made is this shirt from Blanca. You will have seen me wear this so many times. Uh, I really love the oversized fit of it, which I know is not for everyone, but I was really seeking that out in a blue shirt. I've purchased multiple blue shirts over the years and never really been able to find one that I quite love as much as this. It's because the fabric has this, I mean, you can see the way that it just drapes, hangs, falls. It, to me, is everything that I was looking for in a shirt like this. I also really like these super long sleeves as well. It feels very nonchalant and effortless and kind of cool, even though, you know, when we are getting dressed, it is a little bit more effortful, if you know what I mean, because we are considering and thinking about how we are putting items together. The quality of it's really nice. Uh, you probably can't see, but it does have almost a little bit of a texture to the color. Wash as well. I mean, I don't know what to say. I feel like every outfit that I have worn with this shirt looks amazing. I mostly do pair it with neutrals because it is blue and it kind of, to me, is the focal point of the outfit. Um, I got it in an extra small, small, and definitely going to be keeping an eye out on Blanca for other shirts and things like that. It does come in a bubblegum pink too, which I have been considering, but I'm not quite sure if it's right for my color palette. Next worst purchase is one I'm quite disappointed about. I was seeking out a black pencil skirt and a denim to add to my wardrobe. And when I saw this one from Wardrobe NYC, it's part of their collaboration with Carhartt. It really ticked all the boxes. It has this sort of waved, curved effect to the hemline. You'll get a better sense in the cutaways. Uh, and the quality of the denim is really nice and thick. It's 100% cotton, so very rigid. However, I don't feel like it fits the contours of my body quite the way I wanted to. I, I often felt really uncomfortable actually when I would wear this and also um, hopefully you'll be able to see in the cutaways but it picks up a lot of lint and that to me is a little bit of a deal breaker. I really like wearing black but don't always love the maintenance that comes with it especially when it's something that does attract dust and uh, little bits of fluff. So. Yeah, this one is one I don't think I'm going to be keeping in my wardrobe. I am glad I managed to get it on sale, but still disappointed nonetheless. And I'm going to keep my eyes peeled for a replacement that is actually going to work for me. Next best purchase, again, one I don't really think I've talked about on here, the Veja V10 sneakers. I have owned the S-Blast style from Veja before, and I found that those did actually give me quite a lot of blisters, especially at the start. These ones, uh, again, a recommendation from a friend. Very, very comfortable from the get-go, not a single blister. Um, and I really like the more chunkier, I would say 90s vibe to them that they bring, almost like a dad sneaker. Veja is a really great, I would call them an eco-conscious brand that is carbon positive, if memory serves. I listened to a fabulous podcast with uh, one of the founders and it really made me have so much more admiration for the brand and, and their values and what they stand for. Um, but yeah, I've got them in my usual size, an EU40, and they fit perfect. You may have seen these quite a bit on my Instagram because I have been sharing them in my weekly outfit inspiration videos. Next worst purchase is one that is currently in storage. And it's ironic that this is again one that I purchased during my low buy. So one that I was really putting a lot of pressure on to make the right choice. It is a tunic from Totem. Now I also purchased this while I was pregnant. I had quite a big bump. And so it made it hard for me to judge whether practically it was gonna be right for my wardrobe because I thought it would be great for nursing because it had slits down the sides. It ended up being that it was just far, far too long, so too much fabric and ended up not being a thing that I reached for at all over the winter. So that was disappointing. I am hoping it's something that I can revisit for 2023. Uh, I think the other consideration is also whether the undertone is quite right for me. Having an olive tone complexion, I do often find that a really tricky balance. I thought I would talk about this best purchase last because you've heard me speak about them enough. The Valentina pan from House of Dagmar. These also just recently featured in my most worn for 2022. So... You'll know why I love them. They're a cotton boucle, lots of texture. They fit really nicely. I do like the crop length, especially with a boot with a high shaft and they wash well. I have them in the white too. They do come in a longer length if you prefer something that isn't quite so cropped and they're currently on sale. So do just want to mention that. <laughs> Final worst purchase isn't technically a worst purchase, but there is something about this buy which I made this year that doesn't really make it quite so practical for me. So it is an old Celine sweater and you'll know I have been searching for this for years. It is the dreamiest cashmere knit. I was so thrilled when I found this pop up on Vestiaire Collective and I treated myself to it as a birthday present. Uh, quite an expensive birthday present. 
Now, the reason why I wanted to mention it as a worst purchase is because I have only worn it twice this year. Uh, I really bought it with the intention of it being a major workhorse in my closet. And I, I still think it will be, but just not right now while my kids are so little. Because it is really expensive and I'm mindful of taking proper care of it because I want this to be something that lasts in my wardrobe for years and years and years and years. <laughs> I really don't want it to get ruined. A lot of the things that I wear on a day-to-day -day basis, I opt for things that are natural fibers, things that can be laundered really easily because generally I end up getting some sort of mark on myself and I just I really I can't do it to this knit I, I think I, I have to take as much care of this and be so diligent so that it can hold a place in my wardrobe for a really long time so I think that this probably would have been something best added to my closet in a couple of years time but you know how it is with the pre-love market when you see something sometimes that might be the only chance you get to purchase it for a few years and I don't want to take the risk so that's why this kind of made it into one of my worst purchases of the year, but it also is kind of one of my favorite finds, if that makes sense. So those were my best and worst purchases for 2022. I hope you enjoyed and I want to know what were your best and worst purchases for the year. Please tell me down in the comments. Thank you so much for being here, for spending some of your day with me. If you're new and you want to see more videos from me, I'd love if you hit the subscribe button and I will see you very soon with a brand new video. Thanks for watching. Bye.